2D transient. That's kind of the goal. We'll see if we get there. It's 1047. We might. We probably will. 2D transient is the same thing, except you're walking through time. I'm going to talk about that in a minute. I made a visualizing 2D script that I think is nifty. It basically does the same thing as the other one, except it is two-dimensional. And so this is how you would walk through this this type of setup. You'd have boundary conditions all the way around, right? So if you were to think about two-dimensional array as one side of a Rubik's Cube, yeah, that's why the whole Rubik's Cube's been on my desk for a week. I brought it in. Um, you would have basically boundary conditions outside here, and then you would have them affecting the surface of the node. And notice the Ruby's cube is the same size as the black dots. Yeah. Did that on purpose. So if we iterate through the loop, you'll see that we go through, and we go through once, and then we go through again, and eventually we reach steady state because everything's the same temperature. It's going the same direction. So this has the same clear all. Remember, we got to do that. Yeah. I don't know what CLC stands for. I never looked it up. You can once again change the number of nodes in the simulation, change the, the marker size, and the number of times it'll iterate, or how many times I have to press the space bar. I labeled these boundary condition BD1. I'm not going to go through exactly how I plot the boundary conditions. I did it kind of a strange way. Some of them overlap. It was how I could make them all show up the easiest. This is an interesting axis command where I basically auto adjust the axis for how many how many nodes there are. So I don't want to have to re respace the axis every time. And MATLAB will automatically resize your axis if you don't specify it. But sometimes you want to look at specific things. See, I didn't label this, so I don't particularly know what this loop does. Create matrices to visualize initial conditions. I think that's what that does. Mm -hmm. So that plots the initial conditions. This loop plots, you can see this uh, two nested loops, or a for loop nested inside of another for loop. So we walk through the i direction, which I usually set as the x direction. And then we walk through that all the way. So we'd walk from here to here, and then go up a row, and walk from here to here, and go up a row, and walk from here to here. That's how I, I usually code i as x direction and j as y direction. But eventually, I start getting confused, so I just say that this is the j direction, and this is the y direction to keep it straighter in my head. That's kind of the goal. I think that. Coding is a lot like painting. If you can picture the end, the end ob object in your mind, then you can code it a lot better. I also recommend writing it down on paper, like write what you want to do on paper, and then try and type it in the computer, because we're all pretty used to doing things on paper already. And even if you don't get the syntax exactly right, you can correct the errors, but you can get the structure of the code how you want it. So this is how we iterate the actual uh, the the color change. Once again, we have the same the same if statement here that changes the color. Hold off into the scripts. Any question about two dimensional plotting colors? They're pretty okay. What do I have next? All right. So we'll talk about that hopefully it doesn't close my eyes. Here we go. So this is two-dimensional transient. So we have the same same type of, of setup. It just the equations are formulated to step through time. So they're from the same book. It's just a different chapter. So you can go here and grab these if you know how to code them. Rocket code. This is the code I wrote. I was a junior in, in 
in college, this was my heat transfer class. We had to wrote, had to write a code to simulate open. Maybe it's already open. Nope. Code to simulate the heat transfer through a rocket engine with heat generation. A solid state rocket motor, so you'd, it was basically a cutout. So it was a 2D, if you had your, I'm going to draw. If this was your rocket motor, then you would take a, a radial slice, and then we had heat generation somewhere in here. Like if this was a slice, then it was somewhere in there. It wasn't very much, but it would show up if you made it really big. Go away. There we go. All right. We're going to open this manual. So if we go to File, Open. We can pick this one. Notice how these all have a C in front of the number, uh, because you can't start them the, the M script name with a number. And I wanted them to be in numerical order so that I would go them through them in the correct order easily. So this is an example of basically a bad commented script. I have notes about here about when I tell it was bad. So there's no introduction. It doesn't tell the purpose of variable naming. I had to look pretty hard to uh, see what was going on. It actually works pretty good, or really well, assuming it's going. Hey, it's busy. This computer is actually a lot slower than the computer in my office. I'm kind of surprised. But while it's running, it should run. We do have a clear all command. It's important. I have very few comments that tell what uh, what things are like we don't know what A and B is no idea I don't know what that is I know K has watts per meter watts per meter Kelvin Q dot that's the heat generation term but I never specify if you go through here there's a whole lot of loops like this whole loop structure I don't tell what any of it does I remember coding it but this is a whole lot of loop structure that is just out there hanging out Anybody want to take a gander at what that does? No? I, I do remember that each conditional statement is a position on the grid. So if, if the domain looks like this, then each conditional statement is one of them is for the corner, one of them is for this face, one of them is for this corner, one of them is for this face. It goes in between here, one of them is for this corner. For, so you have a lot of conditional statements and a lot of corners. And there's one node in here that has heat generation that has a whole equation to itself. So it's a pretty inefficient way to code, but it uh, works. So that's kind of the rule, it's however you can make it go. I really want this plot to come up because it's pretty. Uh, what else do I have to say about this? If you'll notice, my my counter started towards A and went to Z, which is okay. I also use the Looney Tunes character, Bugs Bunny, as a variable. I used to do that a lot because I would get bored and start naming things. It's very confusing. Don't do it. <laughs> you have no idea what that variable's for unless you're actually coding like Bugs Bunny versus Roger Rabbit and something like popularity. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it's not spaced out. You'll notice all these other scripts. I like to do this type of spacing where I have a, all the variables along the left. I'll tab it out to some defined amount. I have all the equal signs, a space, and then a bunch of tabs pass to just pass the page length and semicolon, the units, and then some tabs and the description of the variable. I just think it's easy to read. It's very hard to print, but if you're gonna if you're gonna be reading it on the computer and not on paper, that's how I like to do it. Uh, I use a bad plotting method. Oh, I wrote that down. Figure two plot. I don't particularly why remember why I thought this was bad at the time that I was going through this. Surface C. This, this color map equals hot. You can change the color map. So if you go to the help menu and you can change, there's a bunch of different, different kinds. The default is something. I don't remember. 
This plots, what am I doing? Surface, surface C is a way to plot uh, a, a three dimensional variable. I don't particularly remember what this is, I'm not gonna lie. All right. Uh, temperature apparently on line 95 is a four dimensional temperature. 95, that's not 95, yeah, that one, where is it, I had it in here somewhere, here we go, it's on 84 now, apparently I deleted something, so this line we have a four dimensional temperature which will run, it'll work, it's just completely not necessary, I don't <laughs> remember why I did it, but it's just a bad way to code, don't do it, unless you have a four dimensional variable that you need to keep track of. That would be like, if you have three dimensions in time, then you have four. It's fine. Um, all right, so that's all I want to say about this. I really wish it would finish and run. Show me my plots, because they're really pretty. There's the first plot. So this plots the nodes. E, the second plot. I don't know why it stopped, but as you can see, this is how you plot in three dimensions. You have two x-axis. I don't remember why it's a bad way to plot. These, I say their length in millimeters, which is, which was the iteration spacing between the nodes. So it's technically correct. This is a spacing in millimeters, but if you were to change your, your spacing of your uh, space iteration, the plot would be wrong and you would never remember to go back and change the label. So this is just the iteration number. Like this is from iteration 1 to 5, not actually distance 1 to 5. It's a bad way to do it. That's the when this, if you look at this T colon colon, there's no, there's no distance matrices involved there. Like it's just the, the iteration number. Does that make sense? Joel's nodding. Joel's about as good as me, or maybe better. This is the, my professor wanted to see our nodal, a plot of the nodes. So this is the, how I discretize the domain. It's also the automatic color um, choosing of MATLAB, because I didn't set it to do that. So this surface will make some pretty nifty plots. There's the heat generation term is somewhere in here. It's really small. If you make it really big, then you get this cone. But it, you can see it's about 700 C on the inside of, 700 K on the inside of the engine, and it, it dissipates out. And the top and bottom were set at constant, constant temperatures. Any questions, comments? Was the color just a function of the height? The color is actually, yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, so it's dark at the bottom and cold or light as it gets hot, which is kind of backwards. But I was young; I did not know what I was doing. This actually took me an incredibly long period of time to write, mainly because I did such a bad job of, of keeping track of what everything was going. But we're gonna move on.